so in the second video, um, we really just want to, second video of our circular functions topic in year 11, we really just want to have a quick revision of the basic trigonometry we're learning in 9 and 10. So um, as I mentioned, we start off learning about trigonometry in triangles, in particular in right angled triangles. Um, and it's important that when we're working with a right angled triangle that we can identify the sides. So we know that the um, longest side, the side opposite the right angle is always called the hypotenuse in any right angled triangle. Okay, um, And then the other two side lengths are named relative to the angle that we're interested in. So in this particular triangle we're interested in this angle down here which is called theta and so we're going to name the other two side lengths rel relative to that angle. Okay, So relative to that angle this side over here on the right is opposite that angle. So this is the opposite side and this, this side on the bottom is next to or adjacent to that angle. Okay, So adjacent side is next to the angle, adjacent to the angle, opposite side is quite literally opposite the angle, and the hypotenuse is the longest side. Okay, so the um, trig ratios enable us to connect angles and side lengths in right angle triangles. Okay, so in a right angle triangle, sine of theta is equal to the opposite side length divided by the hypotenuse. Cosine or cos of theta is um, equal to the adjacent side divided by the hypotenuse. And tan or tangent of theta is equal to the opposite side divided by the adjacent. You may recall back from year 9 and 10 that this is so sine is opposite over hypotenuse, ka cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and toa. Tan is opposite over adjacent. So, ka, toa. Okay. Those things don't go away. Um, we're going to go take a big step back um, to the origins of sine and cos and tan and look at how these rules eventuate. Um, but um, they don't change. They're, they're, they're fact. I'm not trying to remove that. Um, and so we still need to be a bit familiar with those. So let's just have a quick recap, a couple of examples of how we use Sokotoa within a right angled triangle. So the first thing we want to identify is in this particular triangle here, part A, um, I'm, I'm dealing, I've got that angle of 40 degrees. The right angle is irrelevant. This is all only happening if the triangle is a right angled triangle. So it's a right angled triangle, great. Okay, which other angle do I know about? Um, so therefore, uh, this is the hypotenuse over here, opposite the right angle, and this is the opposite side because it's opposite our angle of interest. So given that we have the opposite and hypotenuse, or we want to involve the opposite and hypotenuse in an equation, we're going to need to use so, which has opposite and hypotenuse, so sine. Okay? And so therefore, sine of 40 degrees is equal to the opposite over hypotenuse, which in this case is 7 divided by x. And then it's simply an equation to solve. Sine of 40 degrees is just a number. We have a number equals 7 divided by x. And so we just need to manipulate this. So we'll get rid of the fraction first by multiplying by x. Note that I'm always writing degrees next to the 40 because if I omit the um, angle sign, I'm assuming it's in radians. Um, and so then finally we can divide by sine of 40. So x is 7 divided by sine of 40 degrees. And then we can put that into our calculator. So 7 divided by, now all the trig um, ratios happen in the trig button, which is next to the number 7 here. Um, so I'm going to choose sine of 40. Ah, now my cas is in radian mode. So if I get this um, answer, uh, so I press control enter to get it as a decimal, uh, 9.39. Now in this case, that's not unreasonable. I know x is going to be bigger than 7. So it does, it's you know certainly not a crazy answer. Sometimes it'll be really obvious that your answer is wrong, but it's certainly not in this instance. Um, but I am in radians, which means that when I type 40 in this sine function, it's reading that as 40 radians. Okay? So I want it to read that as 40 degrees, so I need to have my cas in degree mode. So let's change it to degree mode. Let's scroll back up, press enter to copy that, and press control enter um, to get that as a decimal. Okay, so 10 point... Uh, now the accuracy, two decimal places, 10.89, and the units here are centimetres. Okay. The second example here, we'll have a look at um, using the trig ratios to find an angle. So the, the initial process is the same. Okay. This is the angle I'm interested in here. 
this is um, the hypotenuse here opposite the right angle and this side length here must be um, is adjacent to the angle that I'm interested in adjacent to theta so I've got adjacent and hypotenuse which means that I'm going to need to use cos because cos is a op, sorry cos is adjacent over hypotenuse and so I'm then just going to put the information into that relationship cos of the angle is equal to the adjacent side length divided by the hypotenuse length so in this case cos of theta is equal to the adjacent side which is 40 over the hypotenuse which is 65 you can simplify that if you want, but it doesn't really matter. It's not the final answer. Okay, so now we need to solve for theta. In the same way that up in part A, we substitute the information into the, the trig ratio, and then we solve for the unknown. Here, same thing. We need to now solve for theta. So now what's really important here is that this isn't cos times theta. You can't divide by cos. Cos is an operation. Cos is happening to theta. Okay, so we need to know what is the opposite thing of cos happening. What's the opposite to cos? Okay, and the opposite to cos is quite literally opposite cos. We call it inverse cos. Okay, um, and we have slightly um, unhelpful notation for the inverse cos. Although now that we're familiar with inverse functions, you'll be familiar with it. Um, so we're going to need to do inverse cos of this in order to cancel out the cos, which means we also need to do inverse cos off the right hand side. Okay. So cancelling out the cos on the left, theta therefore equals inverse cos of 40 on 65. We'll put that into our calculator. We're in degree mode. So in this instance, I'm finding the angle. If I was in radian mode and I typed inverse cos of 40 on 65, it would give me the answer in radians. Okay. If we want the answer in degrees, um, which we do here, there's a degree symbol on my theta in the triangle here. Okay. We want our answer in degrees. Um, then we need to make sure we're in degree mode, which we are. So trig button, inverse cos is here in the trig button, inverse cos of 40 on 65, control enter to get your answer as a decimal, um, correct to two decimal places, so that is 52.02, and in this instance the units is degrees. Okay, so just a little bit of practice of your right angled trig. Um, before we move on to um, some new aspects of circular functions.